But I have Leverkusen, the German outfit this season, are having a pretty tough time. Eliminated from the Champions League, relegated to the Europa League, and loitering into the bottom tier of the table. It's a club that deserve high domestic success. They've got lofty expectations, and they have a new man ahead in charge, a Spanish midfield legend, Xavi Alonso, getting thrown into the hot seat at the Bay Arena. The ex-Real Madrid Liverpool legend, World Cup winner for Spain, he's jumped ship from the homeland, Raul Sociedad, and applied his trade in Germany, embarking on what is going to be an extremely tough start to his managerial career. Today, we take over Leverkusen at the helm with Alonso and attempt to go all the way, take this club to the top and win them the Champions League. We did the same with new boy manager Michael Carrick at Middlesbrough and now it's time to do our first rebuild outside of England this year. We've got the German heavy hitters who really on paper should be doing better than they are in real life. This team doesn't deserve to be sitting down in 12th and equal bottom of their Champions League group in real life. Xavi Alonso, he's got the tools at his disposal. I mean, there are some top-tier talent in this team. Some big club rejects like DRB and hudson Adoy, New and upcoming wonder kids like Paulinho, Palacios, and Halozek sitting on the bench. And some really encouraging building blocks we can develop upon. Here in Germany with Xavi Alonso, we're going to try and implement a brand new playing style, a new system. We're going to focus on defensively, pressing after possession loss, and in terms of attack, we're going to focus on fast build-up play and forward runs. We'll keep the formation and players there for now as we have a total of 60 million pounds to spend with Xabi Alonso this summer and really make his mark here in the Bundesliga as we check out our youth academy. We don't have any real special homegrown talents to work with nor any Spaniards that Xabi Alonso would be happy to call up. So we're probably just going to completely throw the youth academy to the wayside for this rebuild. Of course we're making it a rule. We have to sign a few Spanish ballers, a couple of Spanish wonder kids as in this current roster there is only one Spaniard at Bayer Leverkusen. That's Ica Bravo out on loan at Real Madrid. He's got a full face scan and everything. Would be a perfect road to glory wonder kid. We'll leave him out on loan for now as we've got the rest of the roster to work with and some new additions to add to the team this summer. Now there's not too many areas of this team that need major improvement but we've gone ahead and decided to upgrade the winger position. I feel like we need a baller that is on the rise. Someone that is about to break through that world class barrier and it's a statement signing for Chabby Alonso those first ever pickup. We're making it official here at Bayer Leverkusen. We're welcoming over Pedro Goncalves from Sporting Club de Portugal. He poses there with Xabi Alonso and we did include a player, Sadar Azmoun, the Iranian headed the other way, plus 13.5 million pounds in order to convince the Portuguese outfit as we get an A rating for that one. He is no doubt going to be a starter over Callum hudson Odoi on that left-hand side. Thanks to his versatility, not only can play on the right-hand side, but on the left and even deployed in the middle as a center forward. So I absolutely love what he's got going on at the moment. He's got so much in the locker to him. And just for good measure, we'll be converting him in training to a left winger. Just so it guarantees he gets game time on that left-hand side. But nonetheless, thanks to PC mods, we've been able to get Xavi Alonso in the game, like, just to be our manager. But unfortunately, in order to do that, we had to activate an icon squad file, which has just let loose every single icon, special pass player that you can think of into our career mode save. So they're just all chilling in the free agents right now. Any club is free to pick up all these legends. For the sake of the video, I'm going to refrain from signing any of these guys on a free, but the rest of world football can do so. That's just going to add a different element to this rebuild. It's going to be so hard. Who knows where the likes of Kaka and Roy Keane are going to end up by the time this video finishes. My two main areas of concern are with the left wing and the goalkeeping position. Haradeki, I know he's the captain of the club. The Finnish shot stopper has proven himself time and time again, but I feel like we just need that goalkeeper who can get to that next level and can surpass Haradeki in the hierarchy. He'll be relegated to second best and a backup goalkeeper as we bring on over Unai Simon. He doesn't have a game face scan, so you can't recognize him. But he's given a little chat to Sheik and Diaby there as he puts on the brand new goalkeeping kit. The lime green looking good on him. I think we've got our brand new starting number one and he's definitely an underrated goalkeeper in real life. It is yet another swap deal. We included Robert Andrich in the deal plus 14.5 million pounds. Xavi Alonso getting that Sir BCHD influence when it comes to transfers and all these swap deals. I know they're quite controversial. You guys either love them or hate them, but it's just a good way to get deals done. Shift players out of the club that are not in our plans. That is just a W signing in my opinion. Welcome to the club, Unai Simon. Well, if the first two weren't statement signings here, we have got something special to show you guys because it's starting to heat up here at Bayer Leverkusen. It is Xavi Alonso attracting one of the best young talents. Actually, the golden boy winner in real life, Gavi, the La Masia Youth Academy 
product arriving from Barcelona. He is going to be the new pivot, the main man in the midfield, to be the poster boy of this brand new project as we've included Karim Demiby plus 10 million pounds for the deal. As all the pressure mounts on the 17 year old shoulders, can the teenager live up to the hype and deal with the pressure here in Germany? He's showing great potential. He's one of the best players you can sign in career mode in general. He plays a pretty similar position compared to Alonso in his playing days, so I thought it'd be the perfect guy to mentor in order to take him to that next level of his career and prize him away from Barcelona before it's too late. He's definitely one for the future and a long-term investment. So Pablo Gavi, welcome to the Bay Arena. We bursted out of the blocks with three major signings. Now it's time for Javi Alonso to do his first major sale. It is going to be Nadiem Amiri, who was deemed surplus to requirements, not part of the future first team project. And the German midfielder will be heading out this time. It is going to be the Wolves for 9.7 million pounds. That's our first player sale. And just like that is two in a row. This time it's another fellow German we've decided to get rid of, Karim Bedarabi. He's now making the big money move to the Premier League. Liverpool pick him up for 12 million pounds. And that has left us with 46 million pounds left in the transfer budget. 46 million spent. It is perfectly balanced as all things should be. Right here for our final summer purchase, we're going in to reinforce our back line. We needed some cover for Jonathan Tarr and the boys in the back. And of course, we got Champions League football. We need depth. We need quality. Going out to pursue another first team centre back to, you know, raise the competition in our defence. He's posing alongside Xavi Alonso. He's from his former club, Raul Sociedad. We've gone out and splashed 34.7 million pounds. No swap deal this time. No trades. It's just a basic flat out transfer fee. I know, it's a weird feeling to get used to. The Frenchman arriving from La Liga. I thought it was fitting that Xavi Alonso, you know, was allowed to bring someone over from his former club. No face cam, but we'll forgive him for now. Welcome to the Bundesliga, big old Robin. And it's a bit more Deadwood clearance. Uh, some admin work to get done here as Alonso has to walk out. Our third string goalkeeper, the Russian shot stopper Lunev. He's back in his bags, headed out the door. This time he'll be transferring to Augsburg, fellow Bundesliga side for 4.5 million. This is a squad rich, full of young and upcoming wonder kids and this hidden gem is no different. We've got a young Danish superstar on the rise and unfortunately we just, he's not first team quality yet. He's not ready to be part of the senior squad so we've had to loan him out. Don't really know if he's going to be part of our future plans either. Zidane Zertemia. I know I've completely butchered his name as he'll be sent out on a one year loan deal to FC Midtjylland. Hopefully that gets his growth and potential up. We've accepted multiple offers for this guy. It's taken so long to sell him but finally we have got the Dutchman Sinkgraven finally departing the club. Javi Alonso doing a little clear out towards the end of the summer transfer window. He is now joining Liverpool again. The Reds are picking up our dead wood for just over 3 million pounds. For some reason Jurgen Klopp loves picking players from Bayer Leverkusen. We're saying goodbye to Loki, quite a bit of a club legend. It is Charles Aranguiz. We've had to shift him off. We've had a few last minute transfer plans emerge as a Chilean now departing to Trabzonspor in Turkey for 9 million pounds. And that's going to hopefully fund our next move on deadline day. It's out with the old, in with the new as we've acquired an extremely interesting talent here from the Bundesliga. It's not only going to be a backup option for Gavi in the midfield, but also in that center attack and midfield spot. We've got big plans for this guy, trust me. I think we've just unearthed a hidden gem that could just be a Karimo cheat code. It's Kuadio Manu Kone from Borussia Mönchengladbach for 27 million pounds on the dot. Him and his blue haired braids are joining us here at the Bay Arena as he is a central midfielder showing great potential. And just for that hair alone, we had to get this deal over the line. It's a last minute purchase. I'm crossing my fingers hoping this one works out and we can dye his hair Leverkusen red. Literally exhausting all our transfer funds on one last buy and that has capped off an insane transfer window. It's been productive, it's been efficient and Alonso no doubt has definitely made his mark in this opening summer window. Here is your look at the first team. We've changed up the formation. It's a brand new system. We've kind of got this Christmas tree-esque formation going on with the 4-5-1 attack. In order to incorporate both of our most promising youngsters at the club, the two cams, Florian Wirtz and Holozek. The German star boy, I completely forgot about him at the start of this video because he had a long-term injury. He was on the bench, but he's back now better than ever. It's Gavi running the engine room. With our brand new signing, Goncalves and Unai Simon earning their starting spots. We've got the likes of Kone and Lenormar, the two Frenchmen on the bench. The board are expecting Alonso in his first season to reach a Champions League quarterfinal, win the German Cup and finish in the top four. So we've got high expectations for these youngsters. We've inherited such a talented team. Now it's time for them to do their talking on the pitch and get this Xavi Alonso system on the run. Let's see what they can pull off in season one. It's been Alonso's first rodeo here in the Bundesliga.
Bundesliga, and we could have done a little bit better. Only one win away from finishing runners-up to Bayern Munich, but we ended up in fourth. It's what the board expected, a Champions League spot, but it's going to be one hell of a task to become German champions and dethrone the Bavarians. However, as we scroll towards the bottom of the table, it is Mönchengladbach and Schalke finishing rock-bottom Union Berlin face-off in the relegation playout. It's a fourth-place finish for us, and in the German Cup, unfortunately, we couldn't take home the DFB Pokal. Again, another big objective that the board gave us and we were eliminated to mines on penalties for three in round three. It's also been the first season, first time in the Champions League for Alonso as a manager, as in Group B, unlike real life, finishing top of the group undefeated and over in the round of 16, they were matched up against Juventus and the Bianconeri eliminating us 3-2 on aggregate. Unfortunately, it wasn't meant to be, but they went all the way to the final, losing out to PSG 4-2. Thankfully, we won't be participating in the Europa League next season as Manchester United lost out to Real Betis in the big dance 2-1. And the Conference League saw Xabi Alonso's former side, Real Sociedad, win that in a all-Spanish seven-goal thriller final, 4-3 against Villarreal. Thanks to Heredeki being shifted to the back burner, we placed Patrick Schick with the captaincy. Let's see if the Czech target man led by example, and of course he did. The 27-year-old in his prime, with 25 goals, seven assists to his name. He's been our top goal scorer this season, and I'm so glad we entrusted him with the captain's armband. Definitely captain material as the new boy, Pedro Concalves, first season here in the Bundesliga. Double figures in both departments for the Portuguese. 16 goals and 5 assists. Once we converted him to a left winger, he grew a plus 4. Amazing stuff for our dynamic attacker as the German star boy Florian Wirtz with 14 goals and 8 assists. 20 years of age, already at an 86 overall. We've been blessed with some of the players in this team and Moussa Diaby, yeah, dynamic potential has been fixed. This is actually being recorded after the update just went live. Thank God EA have started to fix up on some of these things because we're starting to see the growth and development kick in for the likes of Moussa Diaby, 13 goals and 10 assists. One of only two players to get double figures in both departments and one of the best right backs in career mode this year, Jeremy Frimpong, the Dutchman with three goals and three assists, just like Ezequiel Palacios in off the bench. A centre mid who's actually kind of growing into a first team player. I mean, Adley, a super sub with three goals as Pablo Gavi, a big money signing for Alonso, only getting two goals and one assist. I'm expecting a little bit more production from him and the likes of Adam Holozek, yet another check in our team with two goals and one. Le Norman's debut campaign ended up with two goals and 20 appearances. As we check out Unai Simon, who actually picked up a long-term injury, broke his tailbone. He's been out for a while now. He only kept six clean sheets, so I'm glad we kept Heredeki as backup as our most expensive player in the side. Our biggest asset right now is Moussa Diaby, a Leverkusen original with a 90.5 million pound valuation. And I've got some history with this guy in the past. I've signed him in FIFA's gone by, and he's just been completely broken, a cheat code to use in game and it looks like things haven't changed here in FIFA 23. A promising start to the rebuild with this youthful side the board aren't too happy with us unfortunately not completing a fair few of the objectives this season. As that's our season recap we are transitioning into season 2 with Alonso with big expectations we've done the groundwork, we've got the administration out the way, now it's time to push ahead and capture some silverware. After our achievements last time out we've been gifted with pretty much double our season 1 transfer budget the funds are looking war chest-esque with 111 million pounds to spend. It's going to be a fun summer. We're not wasting any time here in Season 2. We are pursuing yet another Spanish talent as Alonso introduces yet another one of these young Spaniards on the rise. There's a new area of Wonder Kids over there and we're tapping into it here at Bayer Leverkusen as we're bringing in a backup striker slash right midfielder. It's Jeremy Pino. He's going to arrive from Villarreal for 44.2 million pounds and not only is he an attacking gem, it's a B-grade signing. He's perfect to bring in off the bench a super sub an impact player to be a great little secret weapon for us still only 20 years of age showing great potential too we might have overpaid for him but I think he's just going to fit our side ever so perfectly being a backup for Sheik at striker and also providing a bit of depth for the wing it's a transfer that just makes sense Alonso switched on for this one I've just come to notice a little bit of a trend we've utilized a lot of Spanish and French wonder kids in this video and relying heavily on their talents but we're happy to greet them at the club as we've brought on over Wesley Fofana. I know he's injury prone. It's a little bit of a liability in career mode. Nonetheless, he's got a game face scan and I feel like he can grow and maybe even overperform Tar and Tapsopa at the back line. Worst case scenario, he's going to be a decent little bit of reinforcement for the defense as 28 million pounds was enough to convince Chelsea and Graham Potter to let him go. It's a perfect deal and I feel like now we have perfected our defensive department as the 22-year-old joins us for his first stint in Germany. Now this 
one's a bit of a luxury signing. Just one out of pocket that I feel like we have the financial freedom to pull off now. It's a bit of left back cover and I wanted to sign him once his loan spell finished up at Udinese. It's Destiny Udoji who arrives from Spurs, the Italian coming in at 8.8 .8 million pounds. We've got him for under his value. He's an underrated star. I feel like he could explode in the next few years if Tottenham actually play him in real life with the Italian showing promising signs and I'm sure if Hinekapie wasn't our starting left back, he'd be tearing it up but for now he is going to be a decent utility option. You probably thought the party was just getting started with our summer transfer business but unfortunately we had to do a lot of admin work behind the scenes, renew some contracts, make players happy with their current deals as we've squeezed most of the pennies out of the transfer budget. We've got nothing left to show for it. After our spending spree, we have gone out on a loaning spree, sending our multiple players and prospects that just aren't in our first team plans right now. We've got Paulinho with probably one of the most high profile moves to United for a one year loan. We've got Azhil, the German CDM, off to Nantes for one year. Turkish outfit Basaksa here pick up Joshua Etze. I don't really know if he's got a relation to Eberece, but nonetheless, we have a third tier goalkeeper, Lenat Grill, off to Torino for a two year loan spell. And finally, it's Timothy Fosu Mensa, the Dutchman at right back, will be back to the Premier League. He's going to Wolves on a one year deal. It's left us with a bit of a dented squad depth, but I think we've got the quality to prevail through. We're training Destiny Udoji not only to be a master on the left, but a master on the right. A perfectly balanced and versatile wing back. So that's going down in the background. However, this is our starting first 11 team to enter season two. You can sense Jabby Alonso's building something special here, especially with Gavi at the beating heart and soul of the team. Let's hope he can get his production and growth and development up this season. The same as Tap Sopa. Now with quality youthful options in off the bench, ready to prove themselves. I feel like this squadron can be successful in multiple competitions. Now that Unai Simon's back from his long-term injury, it's game on. With our Champions League group finally being announced, and it's a bit of a tricky one still. We've got Liverpool, a tough outfit that will be fighting first place for, and then a problematic outfit in Porto who's going to give us a tough time, and then a away day to young boys. It'll be a difficult time to get out of the group, but I've got faith that this team and Alonso can pull through. We haven't faced any second season syndrome. This is the year that is built on German dominance. We have taken home the German Cup against Bochum in the final. And not only that, but capturing the league title as well with a 10 point margin over Bayern Munich, who by the way, have a lot of icons in their team. So that is definitely no easy feat for Leverkusen. But for the first time in what feels like forever, they are champions of Germany as RB Leipzig and Wolfsburg finish in the top four. Borussia Dortmund are down in ninth. And Alonso has captured his first piece of silverware, his first German double. And I think domestically now, we have just completely taken over as Heidenheim and Hamburg confirm their status to be relegated. Dusseldorf will play out in the relegation playoffs. And our road to the final consisted of us beating out the likes of Paderborn, Greater Firth in the quarters, and RB Leipzig to take home the crown. 3-1 in the big dance. They didn't shy away from the pressure in Germany and over in the continental stage, they finished top of the group for two years in a row. Liverpool actually being relegated to the Europa and Porto making it through with us as over in the round of 16. They made it past Real Batiste 3-2. The aggregate scoreline helping them there and beating their progress from last season. However, stopped against Chelsea in the quarters with a 4-3 slim margin loss on aggregate. They came oh so close, but the Blues just being a little bit too good. Wesley Fofana's former team making it all the way to the final and actually winning. So we lost to the eventual champions. A replay of that 2012 classic and it went to Chelsea again. The London club grinding our European progress to a halt, but how has our squad's overall growth and development gone this season? Who have been the main performers and have carried this team? It is Pedro Goncalves rising his way up the ranks. Now at an 88 overall, it's a plus three for him. 25 goals and eight assists. He's been our top goal scorer this season. Netting two more than Patrick Schick, our Czech captain, who was just had a career revival. The 28-year-old still growing with 25 goal contributions. The out-and-out -out striker target man is a force to be reckoned with up top and the only man to secure double figures in both goals and assists this season is our highest rated player Musa Diaby 90 overall I still don't understand how PSG let the likes of this guy and Christopher Nkunku go from their youth academy but 19 goals and 10 assists he's transformed into a generational talent just like Flotty and Verts with a plus 3 overall growth for him 9 goals and 12 assists yet our favourite blue haired midfielder Kuadu Manu Kone this time breaking through having a breakout campaign in the first team 8 goals and 3 assists for him Pablo Gavi actually bumping up those numbers ever so slightly with seven goals and five. And Yedemi Pino impressing off the bench with four goals and two assists. Meanwhile, Adam Holozek has let me down throughout this rebuild. Thought he'd emulate the success as his fellow Camp Lodi and Burtz, but it looks like there are other people ahead.
ahead of him in the pecking order, and he's just not getting the game time and growth he deserves. The Czech wonder kid is still a very wonderful option to have on the roster. As we take a glance over at Unai Simon, who actually gotten himself as an assist this season with 13 clean sheets as our now highest valued asset right now is Flotty Anverts, the homegrown talent out of the Leverkusen Academy, and Xabi Alonso is getting the best out of him. He's now valued at 123.5 million pounds, and Musa Diaby joins him in that nine-figure range. The attacking talent we have at our disposal is potent, and they're proving themselves on the pitch. It's the new Alonso dynasty, so bow down, pray down to a new revolution taking over, and this is just the beginning. Ladies and gentlemen, we're still yet to embark on a deep Champions League run, so season three is up next, and I don't know where to begin. We've gone from strength to strength, and I feel like we can well and truly go all the way. It's a new wave of Leverkusen supremacy, with Alonso at the helm, our brand new transfer budget for this season, 147 million pounds. I don't even know if we're going to use it all. We're just that type of big boy club now. We have got the funds to spend. Financial freedom has finally been achieved. We're three seasons deep and I can assure you that this isn't a nation only rebuild challenge. What we've become known for on the channel. However, our pursuit for Spanish young talent continues as we bring in a defensive reinforcement. Still at Villarreal, it is Pau Torres who has stayed loyal to the Yellow Submarine. We've finally prized him away and we're bringing him in for the big bucks. I know we've honed in on the center backs recently. We just keep copying new defenders, but I feel like this guy can be the key, the main leader as we've replaced him. We included Jonathan Tarr in the deal. It was a cheeky little swap, 40.1 million pounds plus our German headed the other way. I just wasn't impressed with his growth and development. He was getting a little bit too old for my liking. One of our leaders is out. We've brought a new leader in. He's departed off to Spain. Now we get Pau Torres in return who is going to slot ever so nicely into our starting lineup. I'm 100% going to admit, things are going a little bit too crazy right now. Javi Alonso isn't holding back and we are only attracting world-class baller talent to the club on our hot pursuit towards Champions League glory. We're shaking hands with Jamal Muziala. Yes, we had one German leave the club, but now we've brought yet another German wonder kid, a star boy for the future generations. It's an interesting one with this guy because he changed his nationality or at least who he represents on the international stage from English to German, which was probably one of the best decisions he could have ever made. He arrives from Juventus for 92.5 million pounds. It's a big fee agreed, and I believe we have broken Alonso's transfer record. No face scanning game, unfortunately, but it is a flat out fee we've agreed, and the Bayern Munich hot prospect in real life has potential to be special. Another central mid brought into the club. The versatility on this kid is crazy. He's such a dynamic player, and thanks to him being another central midfielder, we've actually gone ahead and converted Kone, who was one of our star performers last season, into a backup cam. Now, with our remaining budget, we've just got to renew some contracts, keep players happy, and do some admin work behind the curtain. Now, just to perfectly round off this season three transfer window, we're back on our loan deal grinds here, just trying to breathe life into these other players' careers who we haven't really given the chance to. So, Demir is headed out again, the teenager joining Crystal Palace. We've got Paulinho on another high-profile loan deal to Juve, this time on a one-year deal. The Spanish wonder kid, Ica Bravo, now moving over to Granada. And again, all these are one-year loan deals. Fosu Mensa out the door to Mines, And we've got the likes of two young Germans with Azil off to Lille and Heidenheim picking up Sadik Fafana. We've had to balance the books, introduce some world-class talent and sacrifice one of our leaders at the back, but I think that is going to help us out in the long run. With our Champions League group being announced, it is now or never. I feel like Xabi Alonso has got all the tools at his disposal. We've been drawn into Group B alongside Manchester United, RB Salzburg and Besitkas. Did someone say back-to-back? -back? Because that's exactly what we've done. Here in the Bundesliga, Alonso's Leverkusen have secured the title yet again with 79 points, beating out the two main German heavy hitters, Dortmund and Bayern, down in second and third. Leipzig make the top four. Normality has been restored with the rest of the table. As we scroll on down, getting relegated is Werder Bremen, Bochum, and Borussia Mönchengladbach will be in the relegation playoff, but it's another successful league campaign. Now let's check out the German Cup, and it was a Der Klassiker in the final with 2-1 BVB winning that one out. We were eliminated disappointingly early on in round two against Darmstadt, so we couldn't defend our German Cup, unfortunately. We've been there, done that. We weren't really interested in it, nor were we interested in the Super Cup, as we lost out 2-1 in that glorified preseason friendly against Bayern. But it's not all that matters, because it's our continental form we need to focus on. To reach our pinnacle in this rebuild, we came out through in second, drawn with Manchester United on 11 points So the first time we didn't finish top of the group, and we ended up getting revenge on Juventus from season one, finishing them off 6 Three on aggregate in the round of 16 as we progress through to the quarters where we were eliminated last 
last year, and we completely swept the floor with Real Madrid. Alonso returning to his former club, which he was adored at and cherished. A bittersweet feeling as he knocked Los Blancos out, and in the semi-finals, he came down to the wire against Pep Guardiola. The Spanish manager battle ended up with a Bayer Leverkusen 4-3 win to progress them through to the final, and Chelsea, who won it all last time out, failing against PSG, and it's another Champions League final up against the Parisians in the big dance here in 2025. Over in the other European competitions, it's Tottenham to win that one out 2-0 against PSV in the Europa League, and over in the conference, it's Arsenal. Oh my goodness me. It's been a fall from grace from Mikel Arteta, but there's a new Spanish former player manager on the horizon, and it's Xabi Alonso ready to take Leverkusen to the Holy Grail. We're going to take hopefully what is our final look at the team we've built here, who have been the main performers. Is it the same old story, and how has the growth and development progressed as we're tracking Pedro Goncalves right now, who has been our top goal scorer two years in a row. The Portuguese superstar, who I'm so glad we targeted in season one. We got in on him early, and he's 35 goals and 18 assists. We're definitely one of the major reasons we were so successful this campaign. And also the only man to achieve double figures in both departments, as Yeremi Pino kind of graduated from a super sub to an actual starter in the first team. Playing out wide or down the middle as a striker with 21 goals and seven. We had Patrick Schick kind of being deployed as a super sub, 16 goals and five assists. Deteriorating in his trajectory, the now 29-year-old approaching 30. He's Musa Diaby with 11 goals and seven. We've got Florian Wirtz, who again, another plus three campaign, eight goals and nine assists for the German. And it was also plus three for Jamal Muziala, a last minute addition who has really flourished here in this Leverkusen squad. We've got Pablo Gavi, who has been Alonso's main project, main star, and still is only 20 years of age. He's hitting 86 overall with seven goal contributions. We've got Adam Holozek, who's probably been one of the biggest disappointments in this video. I was expecting more from the Czech wonder kid. Unfortunately, it wasn't to be, but he's still here. Glad to be here for the ride. As we take a glance at the rest of the roster, we had a lot of players out on loan. It was a record 13 clean sheets for our Spanish shot stopper in between the sticks, Unai Simon, with 90 overall. Jeremy Frimpong also got involved with three assists on the right-hand side, and Pal Torres' debut campaign, he's nearly reached the 90. How many players have we got in the 90s now? World-class ballers, five players. And three of the five were already here before we started, so we inherited such a career-mode OP team. It's actually crazy to think about, but we continued to add, sprinkled some of that Chabi Alonso magic throughout the rest of the team, and the club has benefited as a whole as Florian Wirtz, their youth academy prospect. He came up through the ranks and is now the highest-valued asset at the club, 149.5 million pounds. Five of our players are all in the nine-figure range. For some strange reason, the board is still not really happy with us as we lost out the DFB Pokal, but we're going to stick it to them. We've got a Champions League final to play up against a star-studded PSG. This is their lineup. They have got icons galore. With the likes of Stoichkov and Rivaldo joining Mbappe in the front line, we've got a midfield combination of Schweinsteiger and Barella. Carlos Alberto joins their back line, just like Rio Ferdinand. And we all know PSG are just pretty much the best team in the game. Three years deep into career mode, and we're going to be duking it out for that main prize. The last piece of silverware we need to capture against the French behemoth. And there he is, suited up in his best fit, dripped up for tonight. Let's get it on, guys. The Verts Tifo is up. The Bayer Leverkusen fans have packed out the stadium, and we are set for a magical night here in Turkey. Both sides have got points to prove. They are just two quality opposition, doing battle, trading blows. It is going to be so much fun for a neutral, but we're going to see if Alonso's men can pull through. And PSG going to hit us with that counter-attack, spreading the ball across. Gavi trying to conduct something from the middle of the park, and we're just unable to break this PSG defense right now as they move forward. Here with Rivaldo, he passes it on to Schweinsteiger. There's so many classic names on their pitch tonight, and you can see they're attacking danger as catching our defense off guard. Mbappe, we got off lucky there. It's Gavi versus Schweinsteiger in the midfield. The battle of past and present is going down. Now Spaniard crumbling to the pressure here in the big dance. We've got Nicolo Barella. Pass it through to Mbappe. Now Rivaldo, a little one, two, the give and go. Unai Simon came out and made himself look big in the one-on-one. -on -one. Florian Wirtz, who puts through Hincapié, and all of a sudden, the Ecuadorian now cuts it back on the edge of the area, fires it into the middle. Sheik, surrounded by defenders, 
And Gabby now with the chance to slow it down. We've got Diaby on the outside. And Gianluigi Donnarumma palms it away. And we earn a corner. Alonso keeping composed on the sideline from the set piece. We're going to go through with a bicycle kick. Back to Mbappe. Tap Sopa. Keeping him in his pocket so far with a crunching tackle. Pass through to Muziala. We've got an abundance of space on the right here. It is Musa Diaby with the one-on-one. -on -one. Our world-class French winger has opened the scoring here tonight with a beautiful strike into the top left-hand corner. All of a sudden, we stretched out PSG's defense. An abundance of space to work with. And our number 19 made no mistake, arrowing it into the top left-hand corner. Opening the score in here tonight. And Xabi Alonso looking extremely pumped on the sideline. He is all for it. And we have got the Germans 1-0 up. PSG aren't going to go down without a fight, though. As Stoichkov fires it through to Mbappe. And Unai Simon again with another massive save, keeping us in it as we intercept. And all of a sudden, we've got numbers forward. Our red shirts keep piling up, but it's the wrong option there. With Rivaldo tracking back, and he nearly gives it away. He does give it away. Gavi on the edge of the area. Gavi! It's Donnarumma to deny the Spaniard of the second. And Xavi Alonso looking confused on the sideline. He's trying to crack the code of this PSG team, but Aradecki not giving him much help. As Diaby will swing this one through. It's another cornered opportunity, and all of a sudden, Incapié had the chance. Fall straight to him. PSG with no time to respond. We go into the break. 1-0 to the good. Thanks to that piece of individual brilliance from Moussa Diaby. It's the Parisians with all the work to do in the second 45. Now, taken down Verts. Rio Ferdinand not holding back. And all of a sudden, Mbappe's ball over the top. Finds Rivaldo on the left. The Brazilian cuts back inside. Our defense all over the shop. And Unai Simon again. Our Spanish shot stopper single-handedly keeping this game at 1-0. Looking for the delivery inside. Has entered the box. And our players are in sleep mode at the moment. We've had a few deflections. Unai Simon again. What is going on? Again, working his way into the box. And it's Rivaldo on the edge of the area. And again, Unai Simon had to be alert to parry it out for a corner. And now all of a sudden, Stoichkov has bursted his way through to the box. He's one-on-one -on -one with Unai Simon. He chips the goalkeeper. It's the crossbar. And what is Frimpong doing? Trying to clear it away. And it's going to be an own goal? No? Offside? What is the, What is going on? The ref has just called it. And thankfully, it is offside. Otherwise, that would have been the most embarrassing Champions League final moment I have ever seen. Besides, Pal Torres trying to do a rainbow flick outside of his own area. Area, and it's Rivaldo with the power shot. And yeah, I knew we were playing with fire. We were dang- Oh my god. We were exploring dangerous territory. Thankfully, we have been caught. Saved by the bell twice. VAR. If it's not our keeper in between the posts, it's VAR coming to save us. Who ruled out in two minutes? A genuinely bizarre moment of Champions League history and rebuild history. As if you've just given it away. Pal Torres again susceptible to a defensive mishap. And these power shots from the CPU keep raining through. Trying to pass our way out the back and we got Muziala. We have options on this right hand side. Chic with a Hail Mary ball through to Muziala who cuts it back. Finds Diaby inside. He wants a Champions League double and that's exactly what he gets on the 72nd minute. That could well and truly beat this PSG mega team with a knockout hammer blow. Musa Diaby showing up in the big games with a double. As Muziala found him cut back, the deflection fell right into his path and he rifled that into the top left hand corner. A pole driver and Xavi Alonso definitely appreciates that one on the sideline. We go two goals to the good. I feel like we don't don't deserve it, but PSG's two disallowed goals probably have something to say for it. We're bringing on three substitutes all at the same time. Yeremi Pino coming on for Florian Verts, Holozek off for Musiala, and Kone to replace Gabi. Yeremi Pino already finding Holozek on the counter-attack. We caught him out for being a letdown in this rebuild. He didn't opt for the shot. He saw the less selfish route for the assist, but we've won a corner. At the end of the day, it's Yeremi Pino with the header, and it's just wide. Mbappe running on through. He finds out to Rivaldo, and now it's fine Steiger. It's a big tackle from Mbappe, and Unai Simon again makes his 10th save of the night, and again he comes out through, but it's Verratti to fire home the rebound, and it was only a matter of time, and the Parisians mean business. They grab the ball straight away. The CPU usually go off and celebrate, but the Italian, fresh off the bench for PSG, mistakes caused by us, unforced errors, which have led to PSG breaking Unai Simon's clean sheet, which he deserved, but it's game on, it's back on, and the deficit's been halved. Sometimes you you just got to shoot your shot. You got to risk it for the biscuit. And Nicolo Barella, nearly two Italian stallions in quick fire succession. Could have found the equalizer there. 
and PSG throwing everything at us. Beats our possession. Now this counter-attack. Halozek, PSG have committed men forward. Can we find someone in the middle? There we go with Sheik. Now passes it through to Pino, who fires Goncalves, and he is offside, unfortunately. Couldn't get that icing on top of the cake. We finally get a goal ruled out from VAR. Portuguese could have written the game off perfectly with the fairy tale finish as Jeremy Pino tried to make an impact, and there we have it. It was an early ending to close it off, but by Leverkusen. Cusin and Chabi Alonso reign supreme. It has been a, such a fun rebuild to do. We saw so many young Spaniards, Germans, French, and I feel like Leverkusen is such an underrated side to use in career mode, so I, I'd definitely recommend you guys trying it out with them. We had a meteoric rise to the top ever so quickly, and against all the odds, against all the icons, we were able to do it with the present day ballers we had at our disposal. The ribbons on the trophy will be red and black tonight, the only colour we wanted them to be. It's been fun, it's been a vibe here at the Bay Arena and we're capping off the rebuild perfectly here on a magical night in Turkey. I'm going to leave you guys with the trophy celebrations but if you did go ahead and enjoy the video and make sure to drop it a like down below, hit subscribe and turn on the notifications for more content coming your way. Follow on my socials, the links will be down in the description below. As always, I've been so BCHD. Have a great day and I'll catch you all in the very next video. Control. Baby, you've got to let it go Some things you can't escape Guess it's up to me to find a way Hello, 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 I'm at your door I'm looking for answers I need, I need, I need, I need, need to know Why you never answer it goes on and on, on and on, on And it goes on and on, on and on Goes on and on, on and on, on, and it goes on and on, on and on. Yeah, 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 yeah. Running out of time and I'm running out of patience. Don't know who am I, why the why feels so spacious. Keep on holding on, even though I know I'm wasted. Answer to the question, yeah, I know I'm in.